Hello everyone. It is July 7, 2019. I hope that you are all safe, well, feeling well, your homes are not flooded, and there's no cracks in your homes. Wow, boy. Well, let's go through it. What has been going on for mm, the last 24 hours? Yes, guys, I know. A 7.1 earthquake we have so much going on, and the frequencies that I am seeing on radar are nothing like I've seen them before. And I'm going to be posting a video just on what I've captured on radar, satellite, and the mimic map after this. But I want to show you uh, what has been going on. There are so many people who are now having to live the consequences of man inducing earthquakes, man controlling weather. And I am so tired of people thinking that we are crazy. It's their ignorance because they haven't done the research to find out what we are all saying is true. They somehow think that their ignorance is fine. You know, they, they've done no research, but they will, they will attack us who, those of us who have educated ourselves in terms of what is taking place. And what is taking place now is so unprecedented that it, it's, I don't know what to make of people in terms of, hey, unprecedented. What we are seeing, never seen before. So, wouldn't that at least open their closed minds to begin to question all of these events that are taking place that, no, we've not seen before. And let me just say before I start, I absolutely do believe that they have ramped up the use of we uh, weather as a weapon to uh, rush in their Agenda 2030 plans. Now, Agenda 2030 has, they have already been implementing it, but this year, well, you know, you think about Trump, Trump gets the job done, and boy, is he getting this job done. And so many people are really suffering the consequences. So let me just play a few minutes of this video. This is about the earthquake, the 7.1 in Southern California. California on edge overnight as residents try to recover from back-to-back -back violent earthquakes. Get under the table, get under the table. Oh my God. While still bracing for aftershocks. I was screaming for my husband. It was pretty scary with all the water coming out. The shaking so severe, watch this woman struggle to get up. I used to see this in the movies, you know, people falling down. I think, oh, this is corny. <laughs> it's real. Thousands evacuating in the wake of the 7.1 magnitude quake <laughs> that rocked Southern California, leaving thousands without power and many homes in shambles. I wouldn't care if I didn't have to go back in that house ever again. That's that's how intense it was. It's just not safe for us to go home, so at this point I'm just over. I toured one family's home in Trona. Their belongings scattered and broken on the floor. Picture frames hanging okay. sideways and air vents hanging from the ceiling. Look at that crack. And uh, they were telling me that the doors uh, couldn't hardly open and they had to kind of pry their way in. Could you stand? I couldn't hardly stand. Could barely stand. Could barely stand. Others recovering from fires that broke out as a result of the earthquake. One witness recounting the horror. The window started cracking and flames started shooting out and I just like backed up because I, I wasn't sure if it was going to like blow up. After two major quakes in less than 48 hours that shook pools, ravaged stores and split roads apart, California's governor is calling on residents to come together. We all, I think, have a unique role and responsibility to prepare individually to be prepared for the next earthquake of magnitude even greater than 7.1. And while it seems that things have calmed down here, residents here are not yet in the clear. Experts say there is still about a 3% chance this area could see a stronger earthquake in the coming days. Even 
All righty. Um, John X Army posted this video, and I don't want to hear anything about John X Army. This is not about, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about John X Army. It's about what is taking place. And while I have shown these extremely low frequencies, which can cause earthquakes, and yes, these are acoustic weapons. Extremely low frequencies are in the uh, that acoustic range on the electromagnetic spectrum. Sound, sound waves. Sound waves can be used as a weapon and they can create earthquakes. Do we know for a fact that that is what is taking place? No. The only way that you could say anything definitively today is if you are in the know, you are in the inside, and you're part of uh, these people using these frequencies to induce weather and earthquakes. But based on my research and based on what I see on re radar, you know, when I see these extremely low frequencies being set off, I'm like, oh, God, okay, what are they going to be bringing about? And it doesn't have to happen, you know, at the exact time that you see the extremely low frequencies being set off. So it's very difficult to determine for sure what's happening. So anybody saying it's absolutely fracking or it's absolutely uh, this or that, well, you know, I don't. All I know is that all of what people are saying can cause earthquakes, so we don't know for sure. All we know is that, yes, we are at war, and yes, they are using electromagnetic frequencies to bring about that war, and that's why we are stuck in this crazy land, you know, life becoming just utterly crazy because they're invisible weapons. Invisible. So it's hard to get through to people who have those minds that, you know, they're just closed to anything outside the box, anything different. You know, they can only think the way they have always thought. And that's a problem because we really do need to work on our thought processes and get the doors in our minds more open. You know, it, it, they've got to open. So here, John X Army posted this video and I don't know, I've not done any research on what he is talking about, but listen to him. Um, I don't know why they're doing it, but I believe that these earthquakes are man-made and I'm going to show you the proof right now. Uh, earthquakes knock out Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake, uh, non-essential personnel evacuate. Now look at what our amazing internet detectives on Reddit have figured out, you guys. Um, I'm going to pull it up right now. Another earthquake near Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake. Uh, and we have a Reddit outage. Uh, look out, look what they found. You see this? This is where the earthquake uh, has originated from, okay? These are the coordinates. Look what's there on, uh, what is this? Uh, for those who didn't see, this is found at China Lake near the epicenter of the earthquakes, courtesy of Google Maps in satellite mode. And here you see the coordinates. Do you see this right here? Let me make sure it's on your screen. There's also one, a smaller one that was right here. You see this one? Now, what are those symbols right here? These are ling lingams in the ground, okay? John X Army has been doing a lot of frequency and vibration research lately. Well, it's not only uh, sound th that goes along with frequency and vibration, but if you have a structure, we'll say a pool of some type of liquid to uh, increase sound and vibration, what would it do? It'd cause an earthquake. They're out there doing them in the desert. 
Now, what is this structure? This is a lingam. What's a lingam? A lingam, a symbol of divine generative energy, especially a phallus or phallic object worshipped as a symbol of Shiva. Okay, that's a lingam. Now look, here's what lingams look like. Does that look familiar? They're doing it with sound and vibration. Someone or some group of people are using frequency and vibration out in the desert near China Lake to make earthquakes. And they're doing it with lingams. You see, Whether they are doing it with lingams or whether they are using electromagnetic frequencies to create these shapes, and isn't Shiva one of the gods of, I don't know, I would have to do some research um, on these. Look, we've got some crazy people on Earth, and uh, they are causing an awful lot of disturbance in which, man, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just live our lives? But no, we have crazy people who believe, you know, in certain, you know, religions or whatever that are bringing about such destruction. Electromagnetic frequencies can cause, you know, those crop circles oh my god perfect circles created by frequency so yeah they can create an awful lot with electromagnetic frequencies they can create perfect circles they can create designs for you so let me let's go into weather you know here uh, licking county in ohio more flooding guys more flooding more homes flooded, more neighborhoods flooded, 24 hours in the last 24 hours. This is ongoing now. So when you think about all of, in just the past couple of months, how many homes have been flooded out and where these people are going, I know a lot of people are asking, where are these people going? Mike Morales has been asking, I guess, farmers and, and residents in the areas where the flooding in Nebraska and Kansas and Missouri Illinois, where are they going? Um, and asking people to call in, and no one is calling in. I have asked uh, in videos, those of you in these areas, can you check out what's happening? Are there shelters? Are people, because we're not, I'm not finding any information of where all of these people are going that have been flooded out on a daily basis now for months in so many different states and so many different communities within the states. So if anybody knows, please leave a comment below. Standing, this whole area was covered. Now, obviously the water has receded, but neighbors, this is a good thing they would like to see. They said they wanted to see this, but still they're worried that this water will go into their basements. What seemed like a typical day changed. And all of a sudden it's just pouring like crazy and yeah. I looked in the backyard and the backyard was a lake. Yeah. So I put a little, anybody wants waterfront property in Patasco, <laughs> I have it now. <laughs> Marty Dolman laughs now, but this wasn't what he wanted or expected to see at his home on Linda Avenue in Patascola. I happen to live in the low point. The people at the high end came down and said hello, but it's, uh, they don't have much problem at that end, just right in through here. He says it's. All right, so we have streets and homes flooding. And this is unprecedented. <clears throat> and the fact that we're having severe weather every single day is unprecedented. Now the forecasts, we don't have forecasts where they just say, well, um, there's going to be, you know, light showers or, no, we have, oh, uh, severe weather with large hail, uh, flash flooding, tornado possible, um, Every single forecast is, oh my God, horrible. So one of the reasons why I played this is, did you hear him? It was, it was a nice day. And suddenly out of the blue, boom, you get hit with these storms. That's what frequencies can do. That's what man can do. Like a snarled. There By the way, this is uh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. 
are some tractor trailers that just can't get through with a detour because they're all back roads, so they are going to park and stay here tonight. Flooding inundated the city of Pittsburgh and surrounding counties. Over two inches of rain came down in a flash. Roads turned to rivers. Dumpsters floated down Route 51, water rising up to the windows of several trapped cars. Crews forced to rescue three people. Beck Run Road was unrecognizable. Entire chunks came off of Blanksville Road and debris littered Library Road. Because we had to get rid of so much of our life because of this. In Overbrook, a wall of water washed out Queenston Street. Water and sewage backed up into homes and flooded yards. This side is mostly rainwater in all the mud and muck. But over here, where all the appliances are, is going to be all the sewage. Neighbors say this is the sixth time everything is flooded in a year. In the past, we've had dead rats come up from it. The Wysicles spent the night shoveling mud and muck from their yard. Two days ago, they cleaned up the same exact mess. It's just tough to deal with because you, you just don't know when it's going to happen. Overbrook neighbors say work done at Phillips Park just up the hill from their homes is to blame. They're now making a clear message to Pittsburgh's water and sewer authority. You got to do something and you got to do something fast. I mean, you've known about it for a year. We've been reaching out to everybody for a year now. They know this needs fixed. Like, stop waiting. We can't wait for another year. And cities, local government, you know, towns, they're not doing a thing to bring about the fix that is needed for this. Why? Because they want you out of those areas. Oh man, it's so heartbreaking to see this. This also is in Pittsburgh. Saturday afternoon, the skies opened up near the low-lying Banksville Road intersection at Potomac Avenue and it quickly turned into a river. Rains pelted the area near the BP gas station and Firestone Complete Auto. One of the cars that got swept into the swift, fast-moving waters was driven by 90-year-old Harold Gold. He was driving alone but thought he could make it when it was too late. I knew he was stuck in there and the water was seceding, coming up to uh, basically over his window. Before Harold even had a chance, this good Samaritan who was driving up Banksville with his teen daughter pulled over and jumped into action. So I just took off my shoes and walked over and as I got closer to the car, I saw him. This cell phone video was taken by bystanders, including Messina's teen daughter of the man as he was rescued from his car as it got in. Okay, so we've got rescues all over, we have evacuations all over, and it's impossible to capture all of what is taking place. This is a cornfield, Missouri. Normally it would be a cornfield. But right now it looks a lot more like a lake. This rope is 20 feet? I think it is. Rick West led us right along in his boat to see the flooding along Interstate 29, north of the metro. This is kind of a major one here because it's going south. It ain't, it ain't going to go anywhere but south. The water never completely receded after the floods from March. West says broken levees along the Missouri and Boyer Rivers are sending millions of gallons of water into farm fields. Well, this is the uh, east bank of the Booyah River, about a 200 foot gap here, I would say. That's why West invited state and federal leaders to join him on the water this week. Iowa Representative John Jacobson and an aide for Senator Chuck Grassley looked at the broken levees on Monday. They said they'd put it on the high priority. West also. They said they'd put it on the high priority, except they want your farms to be flooded out. So that's, I'm sorry, it's either Iowa or Missouri. Does it really matter because it's happening all over the place? This is Springfield, Massachusetts. I lived and worked in Springfield. I lived in Northampton, Massachusetts, but I worked in Springfield. This never occurred. Flooded after a really bad storm. We got two cars that basically pretty much stalled in the water. Like two of these flatbed trucks just pulled up. Hopefully they're going to try to get them out. That this is taking place, I, I just, it's... 
where people really do need to open their minds and start asking questions about what is taking place. Come on camera, camera stay on. I can't even get home. I've never seen the streets flooded. There's a car flooded out. The road up here on nine is completely flooded out. Indiana. So this is two minutes and he's trying to just get home, but all of the streets are flooded out and he's having difficulty getting to his home. And of course he says, I've never seen it, never seen it like this. So when you've never seen something. And just when you thought the flooding was over, never, Trumbull. Come on. Um, I had all of these already set at the places, the time period. All right. Um, when, when this is going on, and it's going on all over the country, you really do need to ask questions. And I say this over and over again because, you know, there are people that just happen upon a video and, you know, they have their minds closed and they immediately start attacking what people are saying, but they have never done the research. So... I just try to, hey, do some research on weather modification and geoengineering. Look at your sky. Your sky. Look at the trees that are sick and diseased and weak. Because more and more people every single day are suffering the consequences of what is taking place. Butter. And as soon as we got to the end of the driveway, all, all it was was nothing but just this big lake. Water was clear over around everything. Christina Donnett is a resident in Trumbull County and says she has never seen it this bad before. The whole time that we've lived here, we've gotten a little bit of water, maybe just a tiny little bit in the basement before. But other than that, never any real problems until yesterday. All morning, Dawn and her until husband have been yesterday. working to clean out. Until yesterday, this was posted yesterday. They had flash flooding. We've had flash flooding all over the country. But these storms are being manufactured. And boy, you see them arise like they just erupt. And that's what I'll show you on radar. But Trumbull County, Ohio, these areas are being hit repeatedly. It used to be, hey, once a year, then maybe once every six months. Now they're getting hit week after week. They get a little bit cleaned up and then flash flooding again. It's Earlier today, quick storms rolled through, dumping several inches of rain in parts of our viewing area. Now people in Parma and North Royal. What? Parma? I just posted on Parma a couple of days ago. Oh, Parma got hit again. And are starting their weekend by cleaning out flooded oh, houses. Boy. Channel 3's Tiffany Tarpley is live in North Royalton. She has the latest. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, this basement condo earlier today was once filled with inches and inches of water. You can see that water has now receded, but the work to get things back to normal is only beginning. Oh my God! It was, it was disgusting. Jason Williamson's garden unit condo is ruined. I mean, it was dirty, murky sewage water, and it was, you know, you could smell that it was happening. And Heavy rain led to this mess in North Royalton, an apparent sewer backup, personal belongings floating in the water. His biggest concerns as it was happening: the animal, are they safe? Or what are we going to do? How are we going to get a, you know? pay for this. He and his girlfriend's cats are okay, but Jason says he can't get flood insurance. This is the fifth time something like this has happened since he's owned the unit. Jason says these drains were put in to help, but it hasn't been enough. I think we plan on moving. We're going to move out of here and try to sell this unit, but who's going to take a unit that floods every year? We've lived here 30 years and never had seen anything like this at all. In Parma, Mary Dematsis and her neighbors are drying out their basements. The street was like a raging river. The current, if you were standing in it, would have taken you away. And it happened so fast. I mean, before you knew it, I, the whole cul-de-sac was just filling with water. Here are pictures of other neighborhoods in Parma dealing with what the storm left behind. 
People are frustrated and concerned about what's next. We have to remodel the home ourselves and pay for out of pocket, which we can't. <laughs> which we can't. How many, how many are dealing with the which we can't now? Because Americans, uh, sorry, your economy is not doing well and more and more are struggling and more and more are being dumped out of the middle class. Well, right now, many around Parma are trying to make sense of just how much all this water damage will cost them. News 5's Amanda Van Allen went to some of the worst hit neighborhoods and shows us the mess. Let me just go to, I don't know why, it's like somebody gets in here and screws up my timing. You're hanging out on your back porch, you never expect to see anything like this. And once you notice a bench floating by, you know these floodwaters are no joke. Viewers sent us videos from all over Parma. This one was taken at York Road and West Pleasant Valley. Epic flooding pounding the area. I could not move it. I was submerged in water. I had to literally open the uh, sunroof. That's Maureen Hennessy. She works at Pleasant View Care Center in Parma. Dozens of cars in her workplace parking lot were underwater. She almost got trapped inside of hers. Oh, I was, I was freaking because I was like, oh my God, I can't get out. I actually kicked the door, kicked the window. And it was the same story five miles away in the Parma Sam's Club parking lot. Folks trying to push their cars out of the high water. <laughs> And in addition to the damaged cars, Big the water ones. also yeah. made its way to Whipperwill Lane. While the kids enjoyed the high waters, neighbors band together to get the sewers cleared. But as they cleaned up outdoors, other folks on that same block had bigger problems in their basements. This one, knee deep. We tear it up and clean it up. And start again. Steve Demodis had his sub pump going for hours, but the water had already destroyed so much. Some tools, probably. There's a lot of furniture in the other rooms that it wicked up through the carpeting, and it's all it, that's all saturated and soaked in there. While these residents say they know Parma floods often, they've never seen anything quite like this happen so quickly. This is the worst it's ever been. I've never seen it like this. Never. How many times are we going to hear that? Parma, Ohio. Great Falls. Great Falls, Montana. In a large town, last flooding. It's just endless, guys. It is endless. So, uh, here, flooding causes headache to homeowners again. Again. This is Byron. Byron. Uh, what state? I'm not sure. Oh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay, Rochester, Minnesota, had flooding earlier this week. I posted on it. Well, guess what? They had flooding again. Fill your summer with family fun at Skyline Raceway. Feel the wind in your hair. I paused you to get through the commercial. Here we go. It's been about a week since major flooding hit parts of southeast Minnesota. And with last night's flash floods, residents from the same affected areas say they're fed up. ABC 6 News reporter Jacqueline Harold has our story. We had about six inches of water again in our basement. First, it was the snow. Now, it's the rain. And this last Wednesday, we got another storm. And then um, last night, <laughs> we got another storm. Saturday morning, residents were trapped by the Zumbro River, overflowing several roads in the area after more rain dumped more water last night. <laughs> Terry Ellenfeld says it seems the community can't catch a break. We have two sump pumps that are 
going almost constantly because it's so wet out. And their efforts are literally washing away. It's inevitable with as high as the river is, any extra water that we get, it's going to flood. And with the continued rain and rising of the river, some pumps aren't the only thing that Terry says the community has to worry about. We've lived through three significant floods since we've been here for 25 years. Uh, Listen, yeah, so many people think that this is a natural happening, and that's really unfortunate. A uh, seven-year-old dies from falling tree in Iowa, seven-year-old. People are dying and sorry about the, the delays here. Severe storm blows down trees, damages homes, closes roads in central Pennsylvania. I will link below to everything. Uh, you can read the articles if you want. Woman drowns in flash flooding near Truman Lake in uh, Illinois or, sorry, Missouri, Maine, storms ripping through Maine, topple trees, knock out power, and 12,000 customers were without power on Saturday. The, uh, the pictures here. Look at that cloud. But they should be all of Maine, and they're not. Lewiston, this is Maine. And I have subscribers who are right smack in that area. Manchester, Maine. Ocean Park. Gray Road and Green. Arund Arundel. Baileyville. That's got to be a reflection, right? That's got to be a reflection in somebody's car. Right? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you look at the clouds and, no, I'm sorry. You need to be asking questions about these roll clouds that develop. Bath. I'm not. Some of these are New Hampshire. This is in... Uh, Sacco. I'm not sure if it's Maine or New Hampshire, but yeah, people need to be asking questions. You're seeing clouds that you've never seen before. You're seeing a sky that you've never seen before with all of the geoengineering, the spraying of toxic aerosols that contain toxic chemicals and heavy metals. You're seeing unprecedented flooding, and it's not climate change. That's the great lie they're, they're telling you. But all of this is causing tremendous, tremendous destruction. Here, um, Westmoreland, Allegheny counties in Pennsylvania, flash flooding occurred. This was just yesterday. I, it's really just unbelievable. Tornado confirmed in Mount Laurel as severe storms sweep across New Jersey. Now the Northeast seem, well, I can't play that video. Now the Northeast is getting tornadoes. Um, well, when man is controlling weather, they can bring about anything to you anywhere. You didn't have tornadoes ever before, but now you have them. Drier weather to follow Saturday's severe storms in northeastern United States. It's raining cats and dogs. Would be an understatement. New York and Massachusetts also got hit hard with flash flooding, trees down, power outages. Here, 
over 100 reports of wind damage from Maine to Pennsylvania and Virginia, an EF0 land spout tornado occurred in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Uh, no injuries, but uh, yeah, you had power outages and damage. Look at this uh, shelf cloud caused by cool air rushing ahead of a thunderstorm. And check out my playlist. Um, weather modification, playlist on geoengineering, playlist on climate change fraud. And I have much evidence where a man with these electromagnetic frequencies can move around air masses. Officials performed multiple water rescues in Ocean Acres, New Jersey, after occupied vehicles were caught in deep floodwaters. Road closures were reported due to flooding in southeastern Ohio, northern West Virginia. Sunday downpours are likely to persist from southern Ohio, southern Pennsylvania, and much of New Jersey. Missouri River levee system severely damaged, more flooding possible with heavy rain events. An 11-year-old girl Kristen Goodwillie at Camp Cook, Indiana. The Perry County Sheriff's Office tells me that it happened about a mile from this entrance here. A tree fell on four people, two adults, and two young girls. It killed 11 year old Isabel Meyer. They were. Well, yes, there are a lot of people suffering. The loss of loved ones, the loss of their homes, the loss of their farms, the loss of their cars. Here, what a difference a year makes. Ohio farmers. This is what the corn should look like. This is 2019, the, the picture on the left. This is 2018. This is what they're crop should look like. And because of all of the weather, well, farmers are looking at massive losses. Rochester firefighters rescue man caught in floodwaters. This, again, just overnight, more flash flooding in Minnesota, the same area that was hit just a couple of days ago or a week ago. And I do want to point out, you know, I do get upset. I can't not get upset because I have subscribers who are suffering the consequences of this. And I have a subscriber who lives in New Zealand. And she just recently told me that her aunt died. Her aunt died from a tree falling Oh, severe weather in New Zealand. 56 years old. An oak tree hit Trisha's car. And the loss was devastating to my subscriber because Trish was very loved. And if you want to hear the story, you can click on the link below and play this video. Severe weather. It's not just happening here, it's happening all over. And now we're looking at, just in the last, oh, couple of weeks, millions around the world. Millions. China and India, Bangladesh. Um, there's just so many... Japan, a million evacuated, flash flooding. It's happening. And yes, they are bringing it about to happen. They have sped up their use of weather as a weapon. And now we are seeing massive destruction all over. And we can't get through to people that we are at war. And I want to just say to everyone having to suffer the consequences, I am so sorry. I know what it feels like to have your life destroyed, 
your loved ones taken away or abandoned by them or you know everything in your life suddenly gone and you're just looking at what the hell do I do now because you don't have the resources to simply replace everything all links are gone.